Welcome to the Hawthorns, to the Patel family. Goodbye, Mr. Lai. West Brom faced an existential crisis at the end of this season, possibly. If not, then maybe the kind of fire sale that could have seen them slide down the divisions in the coming years. But Carlos Corberan has got them right in the playoff hunt. And the new owners coming in means they're dreaming of a Premier League return once again. Southampton fans already there in dreamland. 26 games, only one defeat in that time. It's just about making sure it's not two defeats in a row tonight. West Brom against Southampton and a buoyant Hawthorns live and exclusive on TalkSport 2 with the former England West Ham and Norwich striker Dean Ashton and TalkSport's Adam Bridge. Thank you very much, Hugh. Good evening, everyone. So new ownership is on the horizon, and it finally feels like the focus at West Bromwich Albion can be solely on the pitch. Carlos Corbran has worked miracles over the last two seasons, given the lack of financial clout and resources, yet they can strengthen their playoff position with yet another home win tonight. Five straight home wins, four clean sheets. There really is no place like home for the Baggies. The Saints, meanwhile, they've been breaking club records for fun. But that fun stopped on Tuesday against Bristol City. A first defeat in 26 and a regroup for Russell Martin and his charges as they meet a fellow top five side for the first time on the road. It's Friday Championship football at its best. With 15 games to go, the race for promotion is alive and kicking. And we are at the Fortress Hawthorns where the Saints are desperate to try and march in and steal all three points tonight. The two teams are out. Our referee, Sam Allison, all in orange, is inside the centre circle. And the baggies have lined up away to our left-hand side with one change from the win over Cardiff on Tuesday night. Tom Fellows, in good form recently, drops down to the bench to be replaced by the returning captain, Jed Wallace, who came off the bench to get an assist on Tuesday night. Palmer's in goal. Furlong, Keepray, Peters and Townsend across the back. Yukoslu and Moet in midfield, with Wallace, Swift and Johnson supporting Thomas Asante, who leads the line. They do welcome back Ajayi and Dean Garner from African Cup of Nations duty. Four changes for Southampton from that defeat against Bristol City. It's Pazunu who goes in goal tonight. We see Jack Stevens come in to replace Manning. He'll play it right back alongside Harwood Bellis, Bednarek and Walker Peters. Then in midfield, it's Smallbone and Charles who are joined by Stuart Armstrong. And then up front, Mara gets him his second championship start of the season. Ryan Fraser and Adam Armstrong. Joe Aribo is back from AFCON duty and also is on the bench tonight. The teams have taken the knee. We're about to get underway and it's going to be Southampton who are playing in the black and grey with the yellow splashes away to our right-hand side. They are defending the Smethwick end in the opening 45 minutes here on TalkSport 2 and immediately launching a long ball forward down this left-hand side to try and make an impact. And Ryan Fraser, who's made an impact in the last few weeks, has possession at the edge of the penalty area. Gives it back to Jack Stevens, who goes infield once more as Harwood Bellis, of course, who was at Burnley on loan last season from Manchester City. He has possession on halfway and immediately Southampton have been forced back inside their own half. And that's a wayward pass from Stevens, who's not had much for football through this campaign the pass was I'm sure meant to go to Bazuno, but instead he brought Harwood Bellis into it and it's allowed the baggies an opportunity away to our right hand side to do some pressing which is what West Bromwich Albion are doing right now Southampton try to play their way out and in the end there's a foul in the heart of midfield uh, on Shea Charles the former West Ham Norwich and crew striker England striker Dean Ashton is alongside me there's a great a great atmosphere and an air of anticipation about this game tonight Dean yeah there is obviously all cameras pointing towards the new owner who's here tonight sat in his sat in his seat and you can sense by the atmosphere that the the crowd are i think relieved more than anything um that it's changed hands at this football club here's armstrong down the left hand side for southampton towards the byline left foot he cuts across over towards the back post it's an important header away from connor townsend making his 200th appearance for west bromwich albion tonight only goes out though on this occasion as far as Walker Peters and it's back to Harwood Bellis again and they'll look to gain possession inside the centre circle with Bednarek who was on loan of course just up the road at uh, Aston Villa for a spell but Bednarek originally picked up from Lech Poznan way back the pole he'll just help the ball back to Bazuna at the edge of his own penalty area looks like Stevens has gone to left back to start off I wonder if that's to try and combat the attacking of Jed Wallace down this right hand side for West Bromwich Albion and having conceded six goals of course in the last two games you maybe felt that's the one area that Russell Martin has decided to tighten up on uh, a little 
Charles gets it back to Harwood Bellis and Southampton, no surprise, having plenty of early possession here at the Hawthorns on Talk Sport 2, where we've been playing for just over two minutes. That's a more direct ball forward down this left-hand side. Here's Mara inside the penalty area. Armstrong towards the byline, just tries to get the ball out of his feet, got caught, and it's gone out of play. What will be a throw by the corner flag on this near side? But as always, that is magnificent tracking from Yukuslu. He's so good at that. He's spotting the danger, going with the runs, not just handing it over, doing it himself. It was a, a brilliant sliding challenge. Him and Moet, every time I watch West Brom, are so important to the way that they defend and why they've been so difficult to break down this season at times. That's going to be a corner down this left-hand side, which will be delivered by Stuart Armstrong. They've only lost one of the 24 games he's started this season, have Southampton and he's on set-piece duty already. Right-footed swung towards the edge of that six-yard box. Good punch away by Alex Palmer, the man with the most clean sheets in the Championship 14 so far this campaign. Already four more than he managed for the whole of last season. And it was a good punch, but it's still given Southampton possession down this left-hand side, about 10 yards inside the West Bromwich Albion half. Given short on halfway to Stevens, who's wearing the captain's armband, back inside the edge of the centre circle where Bednarek is there, and the high press from Thomas Asante and Swift means they have to shift the ball out to the right-hand side where they find Harwood Bellis, who's comfortably in possession for Southampton. When they have that comfortable possession, the, the centre-backs have got their heads up, they're looking for runners, and Stuart Armstrong in particular isn't necessarily playing in midfield. He's really drifting into a position where he can get onto the ball. It's only really small bone that sat in there. Everyone else is trying to interchange positions and find some space. Armstrong seeing the ball again here. Poor clearance from Kipre, found him immediately. Here's Walker Peters, right edge of the penalty area. Cuts inside the box, gets the shot away, Walker Peters. But it's high and wide of Alex Palmer's goal away to our left-hand side. But no surprise, Walker Peters seeing action inside the penalty area. He's seen more touches in the opposition box than anyone else. He gets in good positions, doesn't he? He does, and actually when you look at the numbers in terms of only two goals and two assists for Walker Peters, I think there should be more. The amount of times he gets into that position, which he did there at the far post, and he's got the ability to dribble past players, got himself onto that right foot and just spoons it over the top. 46th league start in a row for Walker Peters. He's got defending to do now. Mikey Johnston down that left-hand side. He sets it up to Townsend. Townsend with the early cross towards the back post. Wallace is coming in. Can't quite get there. Chance to clear here for Fraser out wide on this left-hand side. In fact, he lets it run out of play. And it'll be a throw-in for Southampton. Level with the edge of their own penalty area away to the right-hand side. Looks like the pattern for the game, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Southampton possession, West Bromwich Jab in counter The thing is, they're so good at it, Southampton. Well, every Russell Martin team is so good at keeping possession and being patient and the interchanging of positions and the bravery of the the defenders to get on the ball and, and play um, that West Brom it is going to be about maybe counter-attacking but when it gets wide for West Brom there's no hesitation it's just out of the feet and get it into the box you know they're first for accurate crosses per match because of that it's get it wide they've got quality get it in the box no messing we were talking earlier though about Thomas Asante not in the best of goal scoring form but you think that's partly to do with the delivery and the pace yeah, and the I, tempo? I don't necessarily think they play particularly to his strengths. When you think of his strengths, it's that sharpness. As Corberan, red card. Well, he has been sent off down below. And I think it's because the ball looked like it was running out of play. And I think Corberan may have touched the ball. And therefore, when it was still in play, he has been sent off by Sam Allison, the referee. Well, there's certainly communication there between his assistant and Sam Allison down below. But the ball's played up the, the near touchline. I think everyone thought it was going out of play. Corbrand seemed to touch the ball and it didn't actually go out of play. So therefore he's been sent off, I think. It, I mean, what a strange circumstance to, to find themselves in where the manager, after only a few minutes, has been sent to the stands. Astonishing. Six and a half minutes played in front of the new owner as well. Who, the camera's immediately panned to, no surprise, in the director's box so we'll keep an eye on that and find out some detail but yeah, I think that can be the only thing that was done though was there anything that was said by Carlos Corbran to warrant an immediate red card just six minutes into the game here at the Hawthorns but I'll have to do without the main man on the sidelines here's Walker Peters on the attack for Southampton down that right hand side towards the edge of the penalty area Alex Moat's in with a good tackle and then there's a foul on the far side 
on Thomas Asante and that will be a free kick on that far touchline for West Bromwich Albion. Yeah, it was just... I mean, he made the decision very, very quickly, that's for sure. And I think it is as if the ball's going to go out. It looks like he's going to go out and then it just curls, stays in, bounces along the line. Corbera... Oh! There's a chance at the edge of the penalty area and it's Armstrong who tries to get the shot away again. Attempted to play out from the back and Cedric Kipre and Alex Palmer having words immediately. There's uh, a player down inside the penalty area as well. Well, what a moment and what a mix-up. Oh, what a chance it is for Adam Armstrong because they tried to play out. Palmer plays it blind into Yakuza who wasn't ready for it at all. It's then just intercepted straight into Adam Armstrong's path. I think he takes too long. I don't think he's not expecting it, so he doesn't react very quickly. The touch is pretty poor, and it just allows Palmer to come out and smother the chance. Really, that should have been out of his feet and finish. As a former player, when you see your manager sent off like that, he's and we know how vocal Carlos Corbran is. We know how active he is on the touchline. Looks like he's rattled them all and upset them all. Yeah, he's well. It's just so unusual as well. And probably a few of the players don't exactly know why. But it is because it obviously didn't go out and Corbran stuck his leg out. There's Moat on the charge for West Bromwich Albion out to the left-hand side is Townsend. Edge of the penalty air, lifts the cross towards the back post again. Looking for John Swift, well headed away, taken down again uh, in the middle of the park by Johnston this time. On that far side, the left-hand side, he takes control, finds Jokuzlu. And West Bromwich Albion will just take a moment to regather. And uh, the analyst for West Brom don't sit too far away from us. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw Carlos Corbran appear somewhere up here. It's a pretty good view from up on the commentary gantry at the Hawthorns. We've been playing here for nine minutes on TalkSport 2, your home of the EFL. West Brom and Albion nil, Southampton nil, but Carlos Corbran sent off for kicking the ball while it was still in play uh, down below us here. <laughs> Extraordinary, isn't it? Ridiculous. It's quite laughable, isn't it's it? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's ridiculous on that far side. It's, it does seem a little harsh as well, to be honest. Well, the referee today, Sam Allison, there was no hesitation. No, no. Well, if it's, you know, it's I in the rules, it's going to make the book, decision. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. It's, I've, never, I've never actually checked the rule book to see if the, the manager putting his foot on the ball <laughs> when it's still in play is such a huge problem. Here's Fraser on the charge towards the edge of the penalty. Here. Armstrong's outside him, clips across towards that back post. It's headed by Adam Armstrong, controlled on the far side. In fact, he's been penalised for a shove in the back on Connor Townsend and that will be a free kick for West Bromwich Albion inside their own penalty area. So an action-packed start to the game here 10 minutes played is West Bromwich Albion Neil Southampton there. yeah he made that far too obvious Adam Armstrong hands on the back of Townsend was always going to give a foul away just the 80% possession so far from Southampton they've been totally dominant with the ball and Stuart Armstrong in particular has picked up some great positions and he's overloading this left hand side with Fraser only outfield player for Southampton over the age of 30, of course, Stuart Armstrong, signifying the age of this young Saints side. And Johnson's away again this time towards the edge of the penalty area, running direct onto his right foot. Johnston tees it up for Swift inside the penalty area. Little step over, clips the ball across towards Thomas Asante. It's headed clear. Moat gets it back into the danger zone. Edge of the penalty area. It's out as far as Johnson again. And the Celtic lone E just shifts the ball to that left-hand side where he finds Townsend once more. Now infield to... Yakuzlu and Wallace has got some space down this right hand side towards the edge of the penalty area West Brom on the attack towards the edge of the box teed up this time for Yakuzlu who lifts the ball inside the penalty area but it's just chested down it was fairly harmless uh, Walker Peters can give it to Bazunu and it will give Southampton a chance yeah I mean he, he didn't look at all Yakuzlu but that is obviously what they do is when there's that opportunity they just help it in there and they're hoping that the attackers are on the same wavelength, which they weren't at all. Not one attacker moved. And just going back, actually, to earlier when we talked about Thomas Asante, I don't think that is necessarily his big strength. Is you know, crosses that are whipped in and he's going to get above defenders and head it in. I think he's better when that's slid down the side of defenders, which, just, which actually rarely happens for this West Brom team. Yeah, he has terrific energy, doesn't he? He certainly leads the line well and harries and hassles. There's a feverish activity away to our right-hand side amongst the support staff for West Bromwich Abbott. I think they're trying to find an earpiece so they can communicate with the bench and Carlos Corbran can communicate with the bench in some way, shape or form. 
uh, sorting themselves out. 12 minutes played here, still nil-nil uh, on Talk Sport 2. Down this left-hand side, which has been the area of attack so far for Southampton with Fraser, who goes back inside his own half. Bednarek will just tease Thomas Asante. Oh, Bazuna who's almost given it away to Swift. Loose ball picked up and sliding in was Moat. Comes out towards the edge of the penalty area as he tries to win it. Yakuzlu was in there too. But they've lost possession and Southampton can break on the counter. Walker Peters driving towards the edge of the penalty area. Still going Walker Peters. Edge of the box. Needed the challenge that time from Yakuzlu would come all the way back. Here's Fraser inside the penalty area. Left hand side on his right foot tries to bend one. But it's well wide of the left hand post. But it was via a deflection and it will be a corner for Saints on the far side. Oh but that was such a great chance at the other end for, for West Brom. It was Moat who took a horrible touch and was intercepted when he had an overload on the right hand side and then a really good break from Southampton out to the left hand side to Fraser he just in that little style of his where he just jinks left and right gets it onto his right foot whips it to the far post little deflection and just past the post corner on the right hand side this time for Southampton surely Stevens and Bednarek and Howard Bellis to be the targets but it's going to be Armstrong to deliver it with the right foot driven goal from Fraser it's a wonderful work set piece for Southampton who lead inside 14 minutes of the Hawthorns it's a brilliant goal the corner taken short Stuart Armstrong swung the ball towards the back post and Ryan Fraser with his right foot has guided that beyond Palmer from around 12 yards out at a really good angle on this left-hand side. They've started the better side and they've got the opening goal of this encounter. It's West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 1. Oh, well, you have to switch on defensively. You know something's happening because it's all set up. They, they, they go as if they're going to play it into the box and overload the box with all the big players and then it's played out to the edge of the box you know something's happening got to switch on got to shift your position nobody picks up Fraser at the back post but I have to say the finish is exquisite he just cushions it there's a nice bit of pace on it from Stuart Armstrong right across to the back post and he just cushions it skims it off the the wet surface and it's past Palmer before he can get down to his left hand side what a lovely cushion finish that was from Fraser sixth goal of the championship season it's his best goal scoring season since 2018 2019 and all of those goals uh, have come in the last 11 appearances uh, for Southampton Fraser making a big impact while he's on loan from Newcastle how can West Bromwich Albion respond with a surging run that time from Mikey Johnston on that left hand side he's got the support from Townsend but again there's everyone behind the ball here for Southampton as West Bromwich Albion try to find and probe their way through to look for an equalising goal 15 minutes gone West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton 1 on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL Smallbone forward to Stuart Armstrong T terrific delivery as well from Armstrong to pick out Fraser kind of finish you'd have been proud of that oh honestly it? and, and what, you've got to size that up because the pace is on the cross from Stuart Armstrong so you don't have to generate that yourself by you know wildly swiping at the ball he just made sure that his side foot was nice and strong Fraser and then just cushioned it into the ground to get that zip off the surface Here's Walker Peters on the right hand side, level with the edge of the penalty area. Gets a ball across early and it misses everyone as it skims across the six yard area. Kipre was back doing the defensive work and it almost fell to Mara, who was at the edge of that six yard area. They've still got it, Smallbone for Southampton, 25 yards out from goal. Thought of a shot then, I think, from the edge of the penalty area did Harwood Bellis, but they're still working it in. How on earth? There's nobody got a touch on that. Armstrong is the player sliding in as that's drilled across the six-yard area again. And it's out of play for what will be a corner, much to the fury of the West Bromwich Albion supporters in the Brummie Road end away to our left-hand side. But that could and probably should have been 2-0. Well, that's two successive dangerous balls played across from the right-hand side, flashed across the box that just needs a uh, centre-forward to sniff that chance out and just be on the move. Armstrong tries his best, Stuart Armstrong, to dive in and just get a touch. He couldn't quite, and I think it just then came off a, a West Brom defender. Two great balls, though. Here's the corner from out wide on this left-hand side. Swung towards the back post and got up and got the header on it. And that's going to be another corner. Again, absolute fury. Cedric Keeprake talking to referee Sam Allison, insisting that came off the head of Harwood Bellis. And I think he might be right. I'm not too sure. I think it probably just about comes off Swift 
it, Harwood Bellis onto Swift's head and away. But obviously they're just upset with their manager being sent off. And the first chorus uh, directed towards the referee after 17 minutes tonight. West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton one. Corner to the Saints again on that right hand side. This is where the first goal of the game came from. But Wallace will block this one out at the near post and try and drive forward, but immediately surrounded by those black and grey shirts. Now maybe a chance for Furlong down this right hand side. Thomas Asante's run into some space, but the ball's going to be cut out and it's well defended in the end by Bednarek and he finds Fraser and Southampton can sweep, sweep up at the back but the atmosphere was good anyway it's gone up a couple of notches yeah, now has, since yeah. the sending off on the goal yeah it tends to do that doesn't it a couple of decisions that don't go your way can lift a, a home crowd but got to say you know the questions of whether Southampton would have been hit with confidence because of that defeat to Bristol City well no way they've been so calm and composed so far in this first half 18 minutes have absolutely flown by here at the Hawthorns on TalkSport 2. West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 1. Ball clipped down this left-hand side for the goal scorer Fraser to chase. Keep Braze there, but Fraser will get there first and has the ball at feet. Slips it to the edge of the penalty area where he's picked out Stuart Armstrong, who's closed down immediately and hassled and harried by Darnell Furlong. They're forced back towards Stevens. Stevens is midway inside the West Brom half on this left-hand side. Stevens again, forward towards Fraser. Kipre gets in with a boot that's greeted with a round of applause. And no surprise as it's forced Southampton back towards halfway, where Walker Peters is there again. Finds Charles on that right-hand side. Driving forward now into space, Charles. Has some support, which has come from Adam Armstrong as they rotate the front three on that far side quite comfortably at times. Here's Smallbone. Clipping it forward into Stuart Armstrong. Ball over the top trying to find Maru who's on the run. But it's gathered comfortably by Palmer inside his six-yard area. Yeah, just really interesting to see the way that Southampton have set up. With Smallbone in the midfield totally on his own. The rest of the players are all out wide looking to outnumber West Brom. Wallace from inside his own half on the charge. Looks for an early ball to Thomas Asante who tries to turn it round the corner and find Wallace. But he continued his run but it's well blocked out that time by Bednarek and it's safely with Bazunu away to our right-hand side. A reminder, that goal from Ryan Fraser, the first scored with the rainbow ball where Puma will donate to an LB, uh, LGBTQ plus fans for diversity fund every time a goal is scored with a rainbow ball. And it's the first time tonight the rainbow match ball has been in use in English professional football. Here's Stevens down this left-hand side into Fraser. Lovely cut in, right-footed ball, swung towards the far post, looking for Adam Armstrong again. It comes out as far as Walker-Peters, who's 30 yards from goal. To the right is Armstrong again. Infield is Smallbone, but instead they go back to Harwood Bellis, and he will find Stevens on this left-hand side. More central area, but just to the left as he finds Smallbone again, who stands out in the middle of the park, of course, with that shaved head. And back again once more with Harwood Bellis and such a successful season last season at Burnley is that clipped over the top it's a brilliant ball actually for Mara appeals for handball not given Fraser's there Fraser will pick up the pieces to the byline left footed ball crossed over takes a deflection bounces inside the six yard area Armstrong gets the shot away after Keepray didn't deal with it but the referee decides that Keepray was fouled and it will be a free kick for West Bromwich Albion who really aren't dealing with this very well they're not and, and again it has, that has to be something that they've worked on because Stevens doesn't even look that ball is played back to Stevens and he just helps it over the top of the West Brom back line Sekou Mara's onto it quickly takes a horrible touch which the fans behind that goal felt like it was handball but then when it came back in again Adam Armstrong it's so obvious you're fouling Kipre because physically it's a mismatch so the fact that Kipre goes flying is obvious that Armstrong shoved straight into his back well, we can almost see here that they are really struggling to cope with this setup, movement and formation of this Southampton side, aren't they? It's like they took them by surprise. Here's Charles. Slips the ball through to Mara at the edge of the box, but Armstrong intervenes inside the penalty. Armstrong gets the shot away, takes a deflection. Palmer just has to watch as it goes out for another corner down this left-hand side. Yeah, I mean, even out of possession, Southampton have got a great setup, working incredibly hard to win that back quickly. West Brom struggling to string two or three passes together and then the slickness of the passing from Southampton into the players that are interchanging you, you can't tell where anyone is genuinely playing once they have the ball that's 
the uh, the reason why West Brom are struggling so much to, to get to grips. Corner number five, and we're only at the midway point of this first half on Talk Sport 2. Southampton lead by a goal to nil. Here is that next corner. Swung to the edge of the six-yard area. Keep Bray with a powerful header away. He's got it almost as far as halfway, where it's picked out by Charles, who goes back to Bazunu. The stats say it all from the opening exchanges here. Five shots already for Southampton, two of those on target. Possession-wise, uh, they're up around the 75% mark compared to West Bromwich Albion's 25. Here's Fraser again as they have the ball once more, the visitors, inside the penalty area. Plays it to Armstrong, appeals for offside, not given. Left for the ball, swung over, headed away by Townsend. Taken down by Walker-Peters again at the edge of the penalty area. Forced back by the attention of John Swift. And he does go all the way back inside his own half. And they'll look to build from the back once more, the visitors, as they come forward down this left-hand side again. Just trying to slip a ball through that time towards Stuart Armstrong but it's left to run and is safely with Palmer and he'll launch the ball out to that left-hand side taken down nicely by Townsend just about keeps it in play and then gets the attention from Smallboat and it's a throw in on that far side for West Brom well the two fullbacks for West Brom have got a real issue Furlong and Townsend to stay wide with Fraser or at times Adam Armstrong on that side or Walker Peters or go inside with then Stuart Armstrong and Mara when they're in that position it's really difficult for the fullback unless you know Jed Wallace and Johnston come back and help they're going to find it difficult to know which one and as soon as they go to one of them the, the, the other player's free and that's where Southampton play it you're listening to West Brom against Southampton in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply we've been playing for almost 24 minutes you're listening to talk sport 2 dean ashton the former west ham norwich and crew striker alongside me adam bridget the hawthorns on what should be a night of celebration with new ownership and a chance to cement that position in the top six but they find themselves a goal down a manager sent off six minutes into the game for touching a live ball while it was in play and a goal behind after ryan fraser after a well-worked corner routine for Southampton they are missing that presence from inside that technical area down below Carlos Corbrand's assistance offering as much as they can but not quite the intensity that they're used to receiving from that head coach and it's Southampton who again have possession on the far side inside Albion territory down that right hand side Walker Peters in towards Adam Armstrong it's collected there by Townsend and then eventually cleared away up towards halfway uh, a little touchdown on that occasion by Harwood Bellis was decent gives possession away but then Walker Peters wins it back off Thomas Asante and it really has been that easy in the opening 25 minutes here for Southampton but I think we have to give credit to Southampton they've been absolutely brilliant so far not only in possession but out of possession just there Thomas Asante tried to win that ball that was played up by Palmer he had three players around him as soon as he took his first touch that's just down to hard work from the Southampton players but then when they're in possession they're so composed and they're doing it there incredibly well and that's Bednarek who you wouldn't have down as one of the most composed players on the ball but he's just turned Thomas Asante uh, quite leisurely while he was in possession of the ball and was closed down and looks to build another attack uh, for Southampton away to our right hand side a reminder another of those promotion chasers leads are in action tomorrow lunchtime right here on TalkSport 2 that's our live and exclusive commentary uh, coverage starts at midday it's a 12.30 kickoff tomorrow Plymouth against Leeds uh, and that will be followed later on in the afternoon uh, by our live Premier League coverage, Spurs against Wolves, right here on TalkSport 2 throughout tomorrow afternoon. Southampton with possession again on halfway. It's been the story of the opening 26 minutes here at the Hawthorns. And it's not something that's really troubled West Brom too often. They actually score more goals when they have less than 50% of the ball uh, in games. They've scored 29 this season uh, when they have less of the ball than the opponents. But... They kind of need to touch the ball at some point in an attacking area yeah, to make that happen. You can sense... Oh, oh again, a little bit loose from Bazunu, but you can just sense it's it's starting to really frustrate the crowd, isn't it? That they can't, you know, get any sort of a foothold in the game, West Brom. Walker Peters gets it forward again. Here's Adam Armstrong, very lively around the edge of the penalty area. Quick feet as well. Dispossessed this time by Eric Peters and 
Wallace is back doing work on this right hand side not really where West Bromwich Albion want Jed Wallace and he's given it away here's Adam Armstrong who tries to bend one from the edge of the penalty area and this one goes behind and out of play for a goal kick and on this occasion the referee has given the goal kick and gets a barracking from the West Brom supporters again excellent work off the ball from Stevens and then Stuart Armstrong into Adam Armstrong again I'm expecting better from Adam Armstrong. Edge of the penalty area, just on the left-hand side, looking to bend it into that far corner and just got it horribly wrong, all straight rather than any curl. The thoughts of the former Norwich and West Ham striker Dean Ashton as we welcome listeners to Talk Sport to the Hawthorns. We've had an action-packed opening 27 minutes here. It's West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton won. The opening goal of the game scored by Ryan Fraser from a set piece, but it's been all Southampton throughout and a disaster for West Bromwich Albion inside the first six and a half minutes of this game when Carlos Corberan, the head coach, was sent off a straight red card from Sam Allison. A ball was played down this left-hand touchline, looked like it was going out of play. Corberan touched it with his left foot. Uh, the ball never actually went out of play. It stayed in play, and the referee Sam Allison came over and directly showed the head coach a red card. Dean Ashley, have you ever seen anything quite so extraordinary? <laughs> not quite, not after six minutes. Anyway, Corbran just couldn't help himself, could he? No, and the stats are all in favour of Southampton, but a rare foray forward here for West Bromwich Albion. It's Jed Wallace, the captain, who lifts that ball into the penalty area from down this right-hand side. But they're too much on it, and it's Southampton possession again, who have been brilliant in the, in the opening exchanges of this game. Yeah, they have been. They've been a team... You can see why they've been on such an amazing run. They have so much control of the game and of the football that it just saps the will and the energy out of the, the opposition and of the support as well. You think what it was like when we kicked off here with all the good feeling around the ownership. That has just been sapped by the Southampton players. Yeah, the new majority owner, Shilin Patel, is here tonight. Uh, the deal will be... Uh well, the I's will be dotted and the T's crossed next week. It's had EFL approval, so he is sat in the director's box as the new majority owner and who will be the chairman of West Bromwich Albion. But it's not going to plan so far. It's all been Southampton who've responded to that defeat against Bristol City on Tuesday night incredibly well. They lead here by a goal to nil after 29 and a half minutes. The game continues right now, live on TalkSport 2. Away down the left-hand side, it's... Connor Townsend for West Brom in those blue and white striped shirts midway inside the Southampton half as they look to try and have a period of possession and just get themselves a foothold into this game and Cedric Kipre has lifted that over the top and it's into the arms of Bazunu away to our right hand side a 50th start tonight for West Brom Albion for Kipre he was signed back in 2020 he's out of contract in June I mean it just it's taken him four years to get to 50 appearances he wasn't fancy but Carlos Corbran has improved him as a player you just wonder about Semi Ajayi being on the bench don't you back from AFCON that bit of extra pace and maybe guile might, might just help them at the back yeah possibly I mean Kip has been excellent this, this season really kind of grown in stature as a, as a centre back under Corbran I think it's more a tactical issue for West Brom because they're just being overloaded the defenders with, with two players at a time and that has to be down to getting the, the numbers in the right area if West Brom aren't going to have many players in the middle and just small bow well then maybe you have to change and allow your wide players to uh, or your full backs to get a little bit more support Southampton with possession at the edge of their own penalty area into the last 15 minutes of the first half here on TalkSport 2 your home of the EFL where it's West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton 1 Ryan Fraser's sixth goal of the season what separates these two sides a lovely worked goal with a delicate finish and there's a lovely ball over the top for Armstrong flags up for offside just went a little bit too early that time Adam Armstrong but the two Armstrongs combine so well don't they yeah they do but they've looked for that a couple of times Southampton yes they're going to play nice football and play it into feet but they've played it over the top a couple of times so it's just again more things for the defenders to think of do I go in short and tight with the player knowing that they've actually got runners in behind me that's what the game is about, is trying to give the opposition things to think about and give them a, an option and then go for the other opposite option. There's a chance for Wallace down the right-hand side inside the penalty area. Not the best of first touches, drills it across the box and is headed behind for a corner on this right-hand side. First of the game for West Brom. Yeah, 
big amount of space for Jed Wallace on the right hand side he just held his position he was found very nicely by Swift I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do I, you know just trying to find someone in the area but he smashes it in at like waist height a little bit lucky to actually get a corner from that Alex Moat who spent the back end of last season on loan at Middlesbrough another player who's been welcomed back into the fold by Carlos Corbran it's his 16th consecutive start in the championship Darnell oh, no, Furlong just getting some instructions from the bench they have now found a radio so wherever Carlos Corbran is watching the game he's able to can pass his instructions down to the technical area here's that corner left footed swung towards the edge of the six yard box again where it's headed comfortably clear that time by Harwood Bellis they'll have another attempt with Moat on this near side this time it's a more direct approach it was floated in towards John Swift but headed away and Moat again picks up the loose ball and then gives it to Mikey Johnston and the Irishman will drive forward and here's Furlong nice angle off the right edge of the penalty area to deliver but instead he goes to Wallace Wallace is going to take them on is he no he's going to tear it up but Yakuzlu who drives one from the edge of the box and it's well blocked by his opposite number Bednarek and out for a throw down this right hand side and I think we'll see Darnell Furlong launch one this time yeah I think so that was really good though from Jed Wallace didn't just play this aimlessly into the box slipped it in towards the edge of the box to Yakuzlu got it out of his feet brilliant from Bednarek out quick as a flash made sure he stayed big didn't turn his head away took it full in the chest excellent defending that red card for Carlos Corbran has really upset things down on the or in the technical area for West Bromwich Albion it looks there's a lot of toing and froing as Furlong launches this one towards the edge of that six yard box Moat's there to help it on its way back in after it was partially cleared receives it back from Swift and now here's Peters 10 yards inside the Southampton half Furlong will swing across into towards that back post where Townsend was waiting and there's a foul and a very obvious foul from Eric Peters on Adam Armstrong and that will be a free kick for Southampton midway inside their own half yeah I'm not sure if when Furlong came across that was an actual injury issue for a player seemed to be a bit of commotion down on the substitutes bench but I can't see anybody stripped and ready to go as yet Sammy Ajayi is warming up but then there was a, a few of them warming up Andy Vyman as well who's scored a couple of goals already since arriving on loan from Bristol City we thought he might get a start tonight but not in the 11 picked by Carlos Corboran remind as well as that championship football for you live tomorrow lunchtime on TalkSport 2 we have also got live and exclusive coverage of Brentford against Liverpool on game day from the Premier League that all gets underway from 11 over on TalkSport tomorrow morning uh, Fraser towards the edge of the penalty area just dispossessed but it's back as far as Smallbone and every second board just seems to be being picked up by the visitors in and around the edge of that West Bromwich Albion penalty area everyone's tucked in in a defensive shape just to try and stop some of this movement but Fraser again has got lots of room on this near side it's with Walker Peters though on the opposite side of the pitch here at the Hawthorns the away support of course has travelled in big numbers away to our right in that Smethwick end and they'll happily watch as Pazunu just down in front of him in his bright pink will have possession at the edge of his own penalty area a couple of times he's almost been caught passing out from the back but uh, they've managed to get away with it and they work it up that far touchline again this time they lose out to Peters Peters into Johnston a couple of ricochets and it forces its way back to Peters again on halfway and he'll take the throw for West Brom yeah I mean that was a, a key feature why Russell Martin was under pressure at the start of the season because of those mistakes um, from Bazunu and the defensive players trying to get used to the way the manager wants to play the bravery the quality that's needed to play out from the from the back to draw the opposition out and they've got to grips with it brilliantly Furlong finds Wallace down the right hand side Wallace towards the bar and the one real shining light probably from West Bromwich Albion in the opening 36 minutes of this game he and Furlong combine it's Wallace again non-stop running he's forced back Yakuzlu Crossfield he goes where he finds Townsend Johnston's hugging the touchline on that far side the left he'll now try and take on Walker Peters cutting in on towards that right foot of his gives it short to Moat on his left he scores plenty of blockbuster goals does Moat most of them from outside the penalty area but this time he's forced out wide Johnston now on the charge goes down towards the edge of the penalty area but it's a really good tackle from Charles to dispossess him despite the rolling and the theatrics of Johnston here's Swift been anonymous in the game really John Swift from midway inside his own half 
Moat onto that far side. Connor Townsend awaits. Infield he goes. Made his debut back in 2018, Townsend. When he reaches that milestone of those 200 appearances today. In the centre circle, it's Yakuslu. Lovely ball to Furlong down the right-hand side. Gets a touch on it, but can't keep it in. It's out of play, but for the first time we've seen Furlong getting to an advanced position for West Brom. It's yes, it's, it's one of the first times we've actually seen West Brom have good control possession with the football and they worked it really well that ball was just too far ahead of Furlong who couldn't quite keep it in but again at there's times I look at Thomas Asante and I think no wonder you've you're struggling but no support whatsoever he stood there in between five Southampton defenders as West Brom try and get the ball wide what chances he got then when the ball probably does come in when he's against all three defenders and when there is pressure, Bazunu just calmly plays it out from yeah, inside because, his six Well, because area. also Swift isn't going to be that player, really, that gets beyond Thomas Asante. He likes to come short and try and link in that way. So, very difficult for the, the West Brom forward. Up towards, on that far side, Sikumara, who makes enough of a nuisance of himself to put some pressure on, but it's the home side who gather up the ball the worrying thing for them the last league win that they managed when conceding first West Brom was back in April last year that was against Norwich when they went behind but managed to pull out a 2-1 victory they have only won two points from losing positions so far this season West Bromwich Albion and to be honest on, based on the opening 38 minutes here you, you can't see them doing much to rectify that no. this is their best spell though without a doubt without maybe looking threatening yeah, it's uh, on that left hand side with Peters here the Dutchman 35 years of age now was, was going to be released but again due to that financial peril we talked about in the lead up today as a free agent he found his way back at the football club after the sale of Dara O'Shea to Burnley and he made a good start to the season and he was back against Cardiff it was his only start since October but he kept his place tonight as Townsend comes forward down that left-hand side towards Wallace headed away comfortably by Stevens, and Swift is waiting or was waiting for it and he'll just sit off Furlong on this right-hand side midway inside the Southampton half with Peters again at the edge of the centre circle given Shaw former Dutch international and then that's a really poor pass it was nowhere near Thomas Asante and immediately Southampton looked to break and charging down this left-hand side is Fraser, but even that's overhit by Adam Armstrong and out for a throw to West Brom on this near side. It's not good enough quality from Eric Peters. No, it wasn't. Just tried the difficult pass all the way through rather than, again, just popping it wide and keeping things moving. Just tries the elaborate ball all the way through to his centre-forward, gets it wrong. But then Southampton have been a little bit looser in the last sort of five or so minutes. Just a, a little drop in intensity. Down on that left-hand side. Townsend again. Which is a little bit more possession for West Brom. Yeah, they've just sat off a little bit Southampton, haven't they? Whereas they were pressing hard early on. Here down this right-hand side is Wallace again. Furlong's made the run towards the byline. Looks to cut it back and he just drills it across. But there's Stuart Armstrong with the sliding challenge and it goes behind for another corner down this right-hand side. Yeah, excellent defending, but he shouldn't have been able to get there. Furlong should have got onto that a lot quicker and whipped that ball into the box. He took forever to get to it and then make a decision to play it across. And Stuart Armstrong, who's pretty quick himself, got there. Moat's going to deliver this corner down the right-hand side. Second of the game for West Bromwich Albion as we enter the last four minutes of the first half here on TalkSport 2. West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 1. Kipre is in on Bazunu in and around the goal line. Moat's going to swing this one in with his left foot. It's towards the near post. It's attempted to be flicked on by Kipre, but it's away again by Shea Charles, who did incredibly well with his header. Here again is Moat. Cutting inside on his left foot. Gives it to Yakuzli. Back again to Moa. Russell Martin just trying to get Ryan Fraser to come out a little bit and close down the space for Jed Wallace. It's back to Moat again. Left-footed ball. Pinged to the far edge of the penalty area where it's nodded down that time by Townsend. 
Thomas Asante, who's not really seen the ball in any attacking positions. Clipped in by Townsend. Moet lays it off towards Thomas Asante, but it's red and clear that time by Harwood Bellis quite comfortably. Swift's going to drive it from distance, and it's just wide of the right-hand post. Bazunu was away to his right. He had to be. He sprung immediately, but it wasn't quite on target from Swift. But that's the best effort from West Brom, and it's taken 42 minutes. Yeah, and it's the first time, actually, he's been able to be in that number 10 position and turn on the ball and face up towards goal. And we know he's got a magnificent strike on him, Swift. And you can always tell how close it is with the goalkeeper's reaction. Bazunu is properly scrambling and stretching with the dive as it probably just goes about three inches wide of the left-hand post. Hasn't scored here since October, John Swift. In fact, he's only got one goal in his last 12 six goals early on in the campaign then a little injury spell still not quite found his feet again here's Wallace in round the back on the right hand side pulls it back across desperate defending again uh, at the near post by Bednarek once more and it's really good defending to deny that ball as it was coming across from Wallace yeah maybe just switching off a fraction there Stevens. not a natural fullback just watches the ball while Wallace runs in behind and is played in there. Again, he has time to pick someone out, tries to pick out Thomas Asante, Bednarek, excellent. Excellent positioning on that six-yard corner. Here's the throw from this right-hand side. Again, it's going to be Furlong with a long throw. He takes the huge run-up as he launches it. It's flicked on towards the penalty spot and cleared away by Adam Armstrong. Palmer will gather it just at the edge of the centre circle. Gives it short to Peters. The encouragement for the West Brom players is to shift wide. There's the run from Swift into space. No offside flag at this point. Swift at the byline, he's got support. Wallace, Wallace drills it across the six-yard box and arriving to try and poke it home but couldn't get a touch that time was Townsend. And it's kept in on that far side and Southampton will try and counter. Yeah, again, brilliant, brilliant cross in. And I just watched Thomas Asante as that ball was about to be played in, just to see his movement, and he was hid behind a defender. That's simply not good enough. Townsend makes a great run right across the front, tries to get a flick on it with the outside of his left foot, misses it, and then that's where you want a striker to have gambled, probably at the back post, to cover the goal. Instead, he, he was stood behind a defender. He hadn't made that move. The shirt tug on Walker-Peters has earned Thomas Asante a yellow card, first of the game. Obviously, we saw a red for Carlos Corberan inside the first, what, six and a half minutes here at the Hawthorns for touching up ball while it was still live in play. Red card from Sam Allison. Bazuna at the edge of his penalty area. I think having a look through some social media posts, the general consensus is no one's ever seen that before. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure someone will tell us if it has, but it's uh, certainly unique as we enter the last few seconds of the 45 at the end of the first half here at the Hawthorns on TalkSport 2. It remains West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 1. I think the Saints happy just to see this clock down to half-time at this moment. Here's Bednarek, who's been very impressive in the opening 45 minutes, but then most of this Southampton side have. That's a good challenge that time from Yakuzlu. We're into two added minutes at the end of the first half. He gets it back to Furlong. And now Keepre has got Palmer available at the edge of the penalty area. And Palmer then will, find, will, will then find Moat on that left-hand side Townsend. Closed down immediately by Adam Armstrong is Eric Peters as it goes all the way back to Palmer again. And they'll now try and probe down this right-hand side, West Bromwich Albion. But there's plenty of running in that front line from Southampton. And then Swift's little touch just opens up a little bit of space. And now Townsend can run. He's got Johnston ahead of him down that left-hand side. He finds him. Johnston goes for an early first time cross towards the back post. Furlong's arriving! And his blocks behind appeals for a handball. And the referee is not in the slightest bit interested. The assistant on this near side has given the corner. And there's heads in hands from every West Bromwich Albion player. Yeah, I mean, they feel like it has to be handball. The reaction from four or five players makes it seem like it has to be. And Stevens just makes sure he's there. His hands are up slightly, but they're close to his body. It's they're not like his arm is stuck out, which is not at all. It's just... I think this is a poor finish in the end, actually, from Furlong. He doesn't catch it very well. He digs it into the ground. It takes the sting off it. It's just... It definitely hits Stevens' arm. It's just... Is it away from his body? Not particularly. And there's not much movement towards the ball no. at all, is there? Which is the other key, really. Moat to deliver the corner flicked on towards the back post and up and over and it was Thomas Asante arriving at the back post who couldn't quite divert it goalwards 
I think it's been put behind maybe by Stevens oh, in the Ste end. Stevens, brilliant here. The way he just flicks this up and over almost from underneath his own crossbar because Thomas Asante is about to score and he just helps it over the top, the defender. Another corner. We're into the final few seconds of stoppage time at the end of this first half and West Bromwich Albion have suddenly come alive. Right-footed swung towards the near post and headed away. Out to Moat at the edge of the penalty area. Down for Wallace. Final few seconds of the half. Moat again on his left foot. Just cuts it out wide to Wallace and that will be the whistle from Sam Allison at the end of the opening 45 minutes and you can listen to the chorus of boos around the Hawthorns and he's being surrounded right now by those in blue and white shirts, the referee and it's been a controversial opening 45 minutes here that saw the manager Carlos Corberan sent off after touching a ball while it was live in play an automatic red card for him from Sam Allison and then just six minutes later Ryan Fraser with a very smart finish to give Southampton a deserved lead the cries of you're not fit to wear the shirt after some decisions that the West Bromwich Albion fans weren't happy with and the denial of a penalty at the end of the first half has warmed this one up nicely promises to be a belting second 45 but at half time at the Hawthorns it's West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton won it's been tasty there's been quality there's been a bit of a change in momentum in the game as well and as you can hear from the fans there they are fully engrossed West Brom just before the half with a great chance to equalise from Darnell Furlong you're absolutely right Dean Ashton it needs to be finished it's an absolutely great chance he side footed it into the ground it did hit the arm of Jack Stevens. you have to say he hasn't deliberately tried to handball it he certainly hasn't moved his hand towards the ball he's very clever though he hasn't made any effort to move his hand away let's call it that what did you think I mean, from the, the position that we had, that's how it looked. It looked like his arm was close enough to his side in a, in a natural position. Yes, it does hit the arm, and he's not tried to take his arm away, but why should he necessarily have to if he's just stood in that position? Um, when it's, I mean, it's, it's come at him from about two yards away with force. Mm. There's not a lot he can do, I don't think, in that situation. I'd say more Furlong has to do a lot better with the finish. I mean, he just scuffs it into the ground, whereas you look at Fraser's finish where he just cushioned the uh, the volley into the back of the net. He didn't look comfortable there, Furlong, with that opportunity. Very important that West, ha uh, excuse me, West Brom's players don't get distracted. All right, the fans are always going to get involved, but they were coming back into the match. They have to keep their focus if they're to peg themselves back. Yeah, I think what, what happened was actually Furlong and Townsend started to get forward themselves and said to um, Fraser and Adam Armstrong, are you willing to actually defend going the other way? And they and they weren't. And they were getting plenty of freedom on, on the flanks, West Brom, and it made the difference. But how isolated Thomas Asante is. Scary how isolated he is in the box. He's the only real player diving towards a cross that's coming in. Swift isn't that player that's going to get in the box. So I, I do wonder whether we might see a, a Byman who's that type of player that will, you know, get alongside a forward when the ball's wide. Uh, they need to do something a little bit extra. We shall see. Um, because Southampton have really taken control of the game, particularly for the first sort of half an hour there. 59% possession. They've had seven shots in the game to just four from, from West Brom. We've had 41% possession, which is respectable. It's kind of how the trend goes in most of Southampton's matches. They went behind uh, thanks to a corner set-piece routine. It was perfectly worked. Another goal from Ryan Fraser. Newcastle Loney getting his eighth of the season on 14 minutes. And it was just what Southampton needed to calm any nerves after that midweek defeat. Yeah, it was, and it was what they deserved. They'd been so good at the start of the game in terms of the interchanging of the forwards positioning, the quality that they'd shown on the ball. And once they got that goal, you thought they're going to go on and get a second or a third probably in the way that they were playing. And then it seems straight. It's like their intensity dropped. They weren't pressing in the same way. So it has gone from having 75 to 80% possession for Southampton has dropped down to below 60 and that's very significant in a small space of time and I just wonder why that was it, it was visible that they just dropped off slightly mm. 
Mm, mm. We shall see if that intensity returns um, because Russell Martin's going to have a word with them. I'm not sure if Carlos Cor Corbran is allowed to go and have a word with his players, um, but they will be getting messages sent off inside seven minutes for touching the ball in play. Dean, it was like his brain had sent a message to his foot because it did look like the ball was going to go out of play, that he's going to have to control this. And he didn't get the message to cancel it to his foot in time before he touched it. I mean, what was he doing? He's done by the spin. He's been completely bamboozled <laughs> by the by the spin, that sort of inward spin that it had just to keep it, keep it in. I, I don't know what he's thinking. It's madness, to be honest. Obviously, I'm sure he will have no idea what the consequences would have been for him just sticking a, a leg out, but it's, you know, in front of your new owner as well. I mean, it's just... Maybe maybe we could pass it off as baby brain because he, he's obviously Dario was only born three weeks ago. Yeah, of course. He's probably getting sleepless nights and he just mine was just like, oh, I've, ne I've never seen, I've never seen anything. Dean's never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything I've like seen it. I've seen a manager tackle a player, yeah. but not... Never, not never touching the ball, the ball in play. No, it's yeah, extraordinary. Yeah. I've seen, listen, I've seen in other countries and occasion, occasions where... You know, managers have, you know, the ball is definitely going out of play. It's coming across the line and they've kind of touched it too soon. But this was going along the line and clearly wasn't about to go out of play because of the spin. And he still put his foot on it, even though I think most people were, you know, could see clearly it was on the line. So maybe baby brain is the excuse. Adam Bridge, um, you're letting him off the hook. Maybe not. If they go on to lose this game, the West Brom fans not happy with the referee, certainly after that penalty shout at the end of that first half. But their team have certainly in this game, although they trail at the break, we'll be back with Dean Ashton and Adam Bridge for a big second half very, very soon. Uh, elsewhere tonight, 81 minutes on the clock, the top of the table clash in the Women's Super League. It is still Chelsea nil, Manchester City won. They will be going level on points if City can hold on for the next 10 minutes. In Rugby Union tonight, uh, in the United Rugby Championships, it's Scarlet 7, Munster 14, 55 minutes played in that one. 62 played in Italy, Zebra 16, Edinburgh 10. And in Rugby League, three matches tonight, all at halftime. It is Leeds 8, Salford 14, Lee 4, Huddersfield 12, and St. Helens 20, London Broncos nil. Newly promoted London Broncos nil at that. So a chastening opening 40 minutes of their season so far. Big 45 minutes on the way as it stands. Southampton heading into the top two of the championship. Ryan Fraser's goal, the difference, live here on TalkSport at the break. West Brom nil, Southampton 1. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy a filio fish in time for the final whistle? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus, rewards account required. Participating restaurants, subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. At Continental Tyres, we've been championing women's football for over 13 years. For us, it's more than a game. It's a passion. Join us on the 31st of March at Molyneux Stadium, Wolverhampton for the FA Women's Continental Tyres League Cup Final for a celebration of women's football. Continental Tyres, driving safety and performance. For tickets, head to wolves.co.uk forward slash tickets. Sometimes running a business can feel like swimming upstream in Siberia. Welcome. With a bear clinging onto your leg. <laughs> but Zero Online accounting software can help you manage the ins and outs of your finances in real time. So you can keep them running smoothly. Soon it will feel more like you're going down a water slide. Your turn. In a rubber ring. Or being serenaded by a string quartet. Search Zero with an X. Because healthy business is beautiful business. Whether it's a better seat, a bigger room or a free cake with your coffee, we all love an unexpected upgrade, especially if you don't have to ask. With the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid Upgrade Event, you get a complimentary upgrade to premium trim when you buy before the 31st of March. Plus, you get £1,750 towards your deposit and 6.9% APR representative. The Tucson Hybrid Upgrade Event. It's the dawn of a new Hyundai. Trim upgrade available for SE Connect to Premium. Finance subject to status. Hyundai UK is a credit broker, not a lender. Terms apply. At B&Q and Trade Point, get three for two on selected coloured emulsion and paint mixing. With brands like Dulux and Valspar, whatever the surface or space, we've got you covered for less. Shop in-store or online. You can do it. 
Exclusions apply. The value of every third item per single transaction in descending price order deducted ends 26th of February. See DIY.com. Here is your mission should you choose to accept it. Get yourself and four mates all the way up the M1 from Bournemouth to St. James's Park, Newcastle. Oh, and it's an early kickoff. Good luck. Are you racking up with fan miles this weekend on a cross-country all-weather game day odyssey? Share your pilgrimage of passion with other super supporters on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission on TalkSport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the EFL. Saturday afternoon. Live championship football. Oh, it's in! On TalkSport 2. Plymouth versus Leeds United. What a chance, what a goal! Coverage from 12. Kickoff, 12.30. The moment of magic! Saturday afternoon. On TalkSport 2. Hard-hitting football coverage. On DAB+, Plus, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Game Day Live. On TalkSport 2. going to be Armstrong to deliver it with the right foot driven goal from Fraser it's a wonderful work set piece for Southampton who lead inside 14 minutes of the Hawthorns it's a brilliant goal the corner taken short Stuart Armstrong swung the ball towards the back post and Ryan Fraser with his right foot has guided that beyond Palmer from around 12 yards out at a really good angle on this left hand side they've started the better side and they've got the opening goal of this encounter it's West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton 1 well, a jubilant day for West Brom off the pitch. Isn't exactly going to plan on the pitch as yet. They trail at home at the Hawthorns in front of their fans, whose mood has certainly changed after they were denied a late penalty shout by a goal to nil. And after all the brilliant play from Southampton, it actually came from a pretty well-worked uh, set-piece routine as Ryan Fraser gives them a 1-0 lead. If they can hold on to it, they will end this evening in the top two of the championship table. 45 minutes still to go. We'll be back uh, very, very shortly with Adam Bridge and Dean Ashton. Game day returns tomorrow on the TalkSport Network as well. The live football keeps on coming. Two Premier League crackers for you, live and exclusive on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. <laughs> at the G-Tech and then I'm convinced that we can do something and get something out of the game never right off Brentford they've done it again Endo into Shabosla bit of space right footed shot at that at that that's an absolute crackerjack the players are great the manager is fantastic so that's a really difficult game across the face of goal Johnson Spurs win it Brennan Johnson Every game in the Premier League is a challenge, you know, and, and Wolves is going to be a hell of a challenge for us. Sarabia is on the hunt. He moves to the edge of the area. Slides it through. Lamina is there. They've won it. It's stoppage time. And it's Boston Cogu. Stand still inside the technical area. Wolverhampton Wanderers. Still all three points in the 97th minute of the game. Enough to make you lose your voice. Uh, Going to be another one of those weekends at 12.30. Kickoff exclusively on TalkSport tomorrow. Brentford take on Liverpool. Liverpool at 12.30 once again. At Faker Rothers with you for that one. No, John Jackson with you for that one tomorrow. No, Faker Rothers with you. I'm confirming Faker Rothers will be with you for that one. Commentary comes from Sam Matterface, the former uh, England captain, Stuart Pearce. And John Jackson will be with you here on TalkSport 2 for the game between Spurs and Wolves. That's at 3 o'clock exclusively here. Um, and remember, it's not on UK TV as well. So this is the place to ling in it. listen. Ian Danter and the former Arsenal winger Perry Groves will be with you for that one. In the build-up to the game between Brentford and Liverpool, uh, let's hear from Thomas Frank, the Brentford boss, because Mo Salah is very likely to be back involved after AFCON. He already knows what kind of prospect that Liverpool front line will be. Facing the, the top of the league uh, team, a team in... In, in form in many ways with uh, the top players, top manager um, that uh, yeah I, I, th I think I said that before when we faced Liverpool I think they are the most uh, I think they are the the best offensive team in the league because I think they are very difficult to close down 
uh, when they're on it because they play behind, they play crosses, they combine, they do one v ones, they are good on set pieces, they they they're good at everything offensively, and also see I think you can see they, they create the, the most xG that that's completely aligned or linked to to the, the way they they play offensive on on the, on the last uh, third of the the pitch. So it's going to be a huge challenge, but we're up for it. We we believe in ourselves. We are confident and. Um, we, we believe that we can get a get a result. Uh, Brentford against Liverpool, twelve thirty. We'll see if Ivan can, Tony can continue uh, his great run. But Liverpool are going to take some stopping at the moment. As I mentioned, three o'clock here tomorrow. Spurs against Wolves. Uh, Timo Werner, the German, has been talking about his time at Spurs and his manager and Postecoglou and why he decided that the move to North London was right. Not really. I think he he trusts my ability. He he said I should be free in in my movements. Um, of course, to get used to the tactics we have here, I think st- I'm still not uh, not done to to understand everything hundred percent. I think I can uh, uh, improve there uh, as well. But um, in the moment, I feel very very good to to be part to play this style of football to to even get more uh, included in, in every in every yeah play in, in the stadium and in, in the games so um, yeah I think um, the team and also the managers uh, and the staff uh, they make it very easy for me to to settle here to yeah include me into the team to be uh, yeah the best player I can be Timo Werner there will be involved for Spurs against Wolves here tomorrow exclusively on Talk Sport 2. Let's head back to the Hawthorns. Not really a party atmosphere in terms of the result, but at least they got the tunes going. Uh, they will want to come back in the second half. They trail Southampton by a goal to nil. Let's hand over to your commentary team for the second half. Uh, Dean Aston, the former England striker, is alongside Talk Sports Adam Bridge. Thank you very much, Hugh. We're going to see a change here for West Bromwich Albion, and it's going to see the introduction of Tom Fellows, who's been playing recently. Uh, He's got three goals, two appearances, his last five starts in all competitions. It's a 14th appearance from the bench in the Championship, and he's coming on to replace Brandon Thomas Asante, which may mean a little shuffle of that front line. Usually plays in one of the wide areas. Potentially Mikey Johnston may go up top, I think, but we'll see how that pans out. We're about to get the second half underway. There was a chorus of boos for the arrival of the referee and his assistants and a fairly healthy debate going on around the ground about that penalty shout uh, before half-time. Certainly a few ex-pros thinking it potentially was a penalty. But in that case, I think it's probably a fairly tight one to call. So let's run you through the two teams. We'll start with West Brom. Palmer's in goal. It's Furlong, Kipre, Peters and Townsend across the back. Yokozu and Moat, the two midfielders. And then it's Wallace, Swift, uh, and Fellows with Johnston, the player that looks like he's going to play furthest forward in this second half for West Bromwich Albion. Southampton are unchanged. Bazunu's in goal. The fullbacks are Walker Peters and Stevens with Harwood Bellis and Bednarak, the two centre halves. Smallbone, Charles and uh, Stuart Armstrong in midfield with Mara, Adam Armstrong and Ryan Fraser leading the line for Southampton. And they are kicking towards that. Travelling support away to our right hand side in the far side of the Smethwick end and they are defending the Brummy Road end away to our left hand side in their black, yellow and grey outfits tonight, Southampton none of those red and white stripes of course, the blue and white stripes of the baggies uh, on show here is Johnston down this left hand side looks like a front three, I suspect it'll be fairly fluid here won't it Dean with Swift, Johnston and Wallace I mean, it looks it looks as though Wallace has gone almost alongside Swift, almost in a, a 4-4-2, with one of them probably at times maybe just dropping slightly deeper and they'll interchange. That's a, I think that's a strange decision. Unless there's an injury to Thomas uh, Asante, Wallace was, I thought, their best player in that first half on the right-hand side. And he's given the ball short here to Johnson as Wallace. Then it's back into Wallace again at the edge of the penalty area, but crowded out by three Southampton shirts. And Armstrong immediately goes back to Bednarek. And there's Stevens, and they'll play with it inside their own penalty area as they do. Bazunu then finds Smallbone at the edge of the box, and he'll run away from Swift and then just move the ball forward towards Shea Charles, who's over halfway. No one coming to him. Now Malak comes across with a challenge. Down the right hand side, it's Armstrong. Armstrong then clips the left footed ball in towards the penalty spot, and it's headed away by Keeper. 
Only as far as halfway where Southampton can build again. Two minutes into the second half on Talk Sport 2. It's West Bromwich Albion nil. Southampton won a subdued atmosphere at the start of this second half as West Bromwich Albion try to do what they've not done all season, come from behind in the championship to get a victory. Shifted out wide to this right-hand side towards Armstrong and that runs into touch and you compare that with the visitors tonight. And the thing is, they haven't lost in 15 in the championship when they've been in front at half-time. So, work to be done for West Brom in the second half. Yeah, but positivity towards the end of that first half in the way that they'd actually come back into the game and taken a bit of control with, with some neat possession. There's Furlong on that far side on halfway. There'll be no argument about the penalty if he'd done better with a finish on the opportunity that presented itself to him in that first half. They have possession with Moat just inside their own half. Back again to Peters. Carlos Corboran. I wonder if he's taken up a seat next to the new owner in the director's box. He's not up here on the gantry with us following his red card in the first half. There's Swift just shifting it out on halfway to that right-hand side where it's picked up again this time by Furlong. Back to Kipre and West Brom having a period of possession as they look to pick out Townsend down this left-hand side who's got some space here away from Walker-Peters. Infield he goes. Johnston lets it run across. Drives the first shot. It's well blocked that time inside the penalty area by Harwood Bellis out as far as Peters. Peters on his left foot. Infield he goes. Central area with Swift. Swift who was very close to equalising in that first half. Now down this left-hand side it's Wallace on his right foot. The, car, the pass is cut out though. And it only comes out as far as Peters. Moat once more. This is better from West Bromwich Albion at the start of this second half. The drummer has just started to try and set the tempo because they may well get a yellow card. As there was a, a breakaway on then for a moment there for Southampton. And it was his challenge on Ryan Fraser, which is penalised by the referee. Yeah, he got caught there, didn't he? Because Luke just lack of concentration, let the ball dribble underneath his foot. Fraser was onto it in a flash and then Yukuzlu just completely committed himself probably feeling like he had to to take the yellow card second one of the game Thomas Asante of course who's now left the field was the other booked in the opening 45 minutes here at the Hawthorne nearly five minutes gone in the second half Southampton still leading by a goal to nil Bazunu inside his own penalty area he's closed down by Wallace who was inches away from intercepting that pass and then having a shot on goal from seven yards out, but they do get it out, Southampton just. Here's Walker-Peters down this right-hand side. Russell Martin is at the edge of his technical area, directing things as it's poked out again to Armstrong down this right-hand side. And then it's helped on its way by Charles, who's going to try and win the corner, which he does right by the corner flag. Peters can't believe the decision because he feels the final touch came off Charles, but it'll be a corner down this right-hand side for Southampton. He wanted a handball, actually, Eric Peters felt as if Charles just handled the ball the referee's assistant is right there and actually probably a bit of both a bit of Peter's hand and then into most the question with Charles is was it already out of play potentially but here's the corner down this right hand side it's going to be driven in by Stuart Armstrong Fraser's come short they've already done well from one well worked routine that one's flicked on and flicked goalwards and Palmer has to make the save and it was uh, the header from Mara that eventually found its way there. Not much power on it and quite comfortable for Palmer in the end. Fellows on his first charge and Smallbone takes him down and that's going to be a free kick for West Bromwich Albion but there's no card, much to the annoyance of the locals. Down this left-hand side once more, it's Townsend. In short to Johnston. Johnston now, lovely ball in from Moak. Chance to run at the defence here for Mikey Johnston. Tries to go past Smallbone. Skips past the attention of Stuart Armstrong. Finds Kipre out wide on that right-hand side. Here's Fellows. Fellows looking to cut in, probably onto his left foot if he gets the chance, which he does. Swings it towards the back post. And it's out of play for what will be a goal kick to Southampton away to our left-hand side. Yeah, shame. Because it was really good play. Kipre fizzing that out towards Fellows. Nice little couple of step-overs onto that left foot and then a horribly over-hit cross. But their energy's been good in the, the start of the second half. West Brom, it's, they are the ones that are getting to every second ball that drops, which was a total contrast to how it was at the early part of that first half. Yeah, Fellows, the second half substitute, born in Solihull, joined the club at under-10s level and has now finally got his opportunity 
in the first team and has been grabbing it with both hands. Quite surprised to see him left out at the start tonight, but he's on now. And they have possession with Moat inside the centre circle. Johnston again, 35 yards out from goal. Sips it through to Wallace, offside flag is up immediately from the assistant on the far side, Craig Taylor. And that will be a free kick uh, for Southampton. But this is better from West Brom. Yeah, it is. And Johnston's just coming off that wing into a position where he can get the ball on the half turn and then look to play Wallace in. That's three times now he's got the ball into that position. Wallace had strayed into an offside position. Again, he's not a centre forward. So is he going to make the runs of a centre forward? No, it was a bit of an idle run. Clearly offside, easy to defend. It's a bit like you say, it does look a bit like a 4-4-2, doesn't it? With it, Swift no, it and is. Wallace as the Abs two strikers. Absolutely. And neither are strikers. No. I know they have their issues in the striking department, of course, with that injury to Daryl DK and Josh Madger as well. But they had Thomas Asante on the field. They have Byron on the bench. They also, of course, have Callum Marshall on loan from West Ham amongst the substitutes too. So plenty of options, but not what Carlos Corbran wants right now. Kipre intercepts a pass from Smallbone that was looking to try and find Mara at the edge of the penalty area. And it gives another moment for West Brom to launch one of their counter-attacks at pace. And Mikey Johnson, who seems to be the fulcrum for most things at the start of this second half for the home side, is in possession right at the edge of the penalty area. But he's playing a ball through a crowd of Southampton shirts. And no surprise, really, that Walker Peters gathers possession is that is that indecision then? yeah yeah that's exactly what it was I think he felt as if he wanted to play it to Wallace and then that was shut down and then there wasn't an option and an angle to play in field and in the end he kind of just stabbed it towards a, a West Brom player but again it's a really good position he picks up he's 24 years of age Mikey Johnston scored that goal against Cardiff got a couple for Celtic earlier on in the season when he was making his appearances 12 in total he made for the uh, Scottish champions, couple of goals for them on Boxing Day before making the lone switch to the Hawthorns. Here's Wallace on a charge at pace, ball at feet, inviting a challenge, gets a challenge, 30 yards out from goal, and the free kick goes West Bromwich Albion's way. Yeah, brilliant driving run from Wallace, and that's really what he's going to do in that position. And you know what's happened. <laughs> a yeah. yellow card has finally been brandished. Will to a Smallbone. Southampton player yeah Will Smallbone's gone into the book and that's the one thing you can get from when he gets going at pace I mean he's got a turn about him hasn't he and it, it's almost inviting saying come on then if you're going to challenge me you're going to have to foul me yeah I think that's, that's how he's going to play that role he's probably not necessarily trying to run in behind and time those runs it's going to be receiving it and dribbling like he would on the wing but down the down the middle and just made Smallbone commit the foul and this is a really great position for Swift it is the former Reading man is 30 yards out from goal just to the left edge of the D and an opportunity to try and get something on target Moat's obviously lurking around as well which is no surprise 24 of his 39 goals have come from outside the penalty area so no we know what he can do with his left foot but this feels like it suits the right of John Swift Wallace has also had some success from free kicks this year. In fact, his last goal that he scored uh, was courtesy of a free kick. But this will be swift. This is 30 yards out. And it's a good opportunity for West Bromwich Albion. But he's got it dipping, but just dipping a little bit too late to trouble Bazuna. Yeah, it wasn't a bad effort. It wasn't. But you could just tell it was a fraction too high. You've got to almost just shave a couple of tram lines into that the hair of the, the wall instead it was probably a good foot over the top of the head and he closed that one down again Bazunu gives it short towards Charles and well it was Eric Peters that time that was up doing the pressing and almost one possession that's good play from Fellows 25 yards out from goal gets it to the right Swift is there holds possession he's got two round him back to Moat he's going to fancy his chances with a left foot pile driver and it's blocked by Bednarek who's limping he took that one right on the ankle well that's a delightful ball from Peters it finds Johnston edge of the penalty area on this left hand side on his right foot tees it up for Moat again he'll go wide to Furlong Furlong on his right foot angle of the box inside the penalty area now he just steps back Moat will go square surely to Peters Johnston's out wide on this left hand side if he goes for him instead he gives it to Yakuzlu and his pass to keep rages forces West Bromwich Albion back inside their own half 
Changes yeah. coming for Southampton. Yeah, not not surprised to see that from Russell Martin. His team have not got a grip at all. Now, Bellows is trying to get away on the far side, but the offside flag is up. It's going to be Sam Adozi and Joe Aribo, who look like they're going to come on uh, for Southampton. Aribo, of course, has uh, been away with Nigeria at the African Cup of Nations. Five appearances for him while he was uh, taking part in that tournament over in the Ivory Coast. And he's going to come on and replace Shea Charles. So Rebo enters the fray. And the other change, as we mentioned, we'll see the introduction and the replacement on this occasion of Ryan Fraser, the goal scorer. And he's going to be replaced by Sam Adozi. Well, you think how influential Fraser was in that first half, constantly getting on the ball, looking to dribble at the full back and get his crosses in. Don't think you've mentioned him once in the second half. No, Sam Adozi, eighth sub appearance of the season. He had started 14 prior to tonight. Never completed 90 minutes in professional football. As Sam Adozi, and he's only going to get, what, 32 plus stoppage time tonight because that's what's left here at the Hawthorns. West Bromwich Albion trailing against Southampton. They last lost the game here at the beginning of December. That was against Leicester. Ever since then, it's been five straight wins, four clean sheets. That's out the window, of course, tonight after Ryan Fraser's goal. And it's Southampton looking to build from the back again with Stevens on that left-hand side. Into Will Smallbow. Out to that far touchline where Stuart Armstrong now waits. He's got a dozy ahead of him. Armstrong's going there. Skips past the first challenge. Armstrong towards the byline here. And looks to cut it back, but instead wins the corner on that far side. Right in front of those Southampton supporters. Yeah, he's got that ability, Stuart Armstrong. He's deceptively quick, actually. And dribbles with the ball with great pace. And just in the end, ran out of room. Managed to win a corner in... But it was good defending from Furlong stuck to him here's the corner on that far side Stevens is lurking probably about seven or eight yards outside or away from the goal line Harwood Bellis round the back Smallbone there as well and Bednarek it's fairly standard there's Aribos lurking at the edge of the penalty area should they go into that direction Palmer gets a good fist on that because that was a good well delivered corner but it looks like it's taken a deflection off of a Southampton head as well and out for a goal kick yeah he's just gone to punch it Palmer and just got a tiny touch because Mara's just there looking to head it in bounces off the top of Mara's head because of the touch from Palmer yeah it certainly did the ponytail was bouncing in the air as Townsend can't keep it in on this near side and it'll be a throw for Southampton Midway inside the West Bromwich Albion half. We've had an hour on Talk Sport 2, your home of the EFL. West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 1. A reminder, tomorrow afternoon, 12.30, Plymouth against Leeds as the race for the Premier League continues right here on Talk Sport 2. Coverage gets underway from midday of that one over on Talk Sport from 11. It's game day exclusive. Brentford against Liverpool is our exclusive national radio commentary. 12.30 kickoff tomorrow, potentially Mo Salah. Uh, back for Liverpool tomorrow. He's in contention to start. And Brentford looking to build on that win last weekend against Wolves. Smallbone does well to the left-hand side. Inside the penalty area, trying to work it. There's a shot coming in from Armstrong at the edge of the penalty area. Stuart Armstrong, that is. The ricochet will fall to Adam Armstrong on this far side. And ball goes out of play. And he's given the corner, much to the fury of Townsend. That was, that was lovely play by Dozy though, because he could have gone himself, and many players probably would. He didn't. He just lays it to the edge of the box, and Moa, brilliant, brilliant block, because Stuart Armstrong feels as if this is a great opportunity for him with the side foot, and Moa just flings himself at it. He did, superb block. Armstrong's coming over to take this, and Dozy's offering himself short. Once again, Arebo is at the edge of the penalty area. There's seven Southampton shirts in and around the box and Armstrong with his right foot will swing this one out Smallbone and Bednarek look like potential targets this time there's plenty of movement as across it comes and it almost evades everyone Townsend is the player that got a flick on it and it goes out the back edge of the penalty area and they'll gather possession again with a rebo socks down around his ankles as he gives it short to Walker Peters on halfway is Smallbone 
Southampton just keep possession again. Armstrong on his left foot this time is swinging that to the far side where trying to get on the end of it was Mara and it's out of play for what will be a throw into West Brom on that far side. Yeah, and just literally since the changes, they've got a bit more control back, Southampton. So it's clearly had the desired effect, Russell Martin making those changes just to try and upset the rhythm of West Brom. They've already got most, uh, the most points and the most wins they've ever had in an EFL season after 31 games. And a really good goal-scoring run as well in the Championship. It's 25 in a row. They've found the back of the net. So all the measures are good for Southampton. That's Paul, though, from Smallbone. He's given it away to Townsend. Townsend, who finds Johnston. Johnston doesn't go first time, gets it onto his right foot, tries to pull it back towards Moat at the edge of the penalty area. And again, Smallbone has atoned for his earlier mistake and he wins the ball back uh, for Southampton. And it's a throw for West Brom on halfway. Yeah, but it's Johnston who keeps getting into those positions and he's just not able to find either the right pass or the quality on the delivery. You see he's upset with himself. Triple change coming here. So this is going to be the... the uh, well, this is going to be four of the five substitutions made for West Bromwich Albion. And it's going to be Marshall, Reach and Dean Garner who are all coming on. And John Swift is the first player to depart. And Jed Wallace shakes his head as he walks off as well. So yeah. Wallace departing too. Dean Garner is back. Of course, Moat's making his way off too. Wallace gives the captain's armband to Townsend and looks less than impressed with that decision from Carlos Gorbrand's coaching team. Yeah, look... I it surprised me the change at half time and it surprised me that it was Wallace and Swift who were seen as the two forwards and it hasn't really worked has it they've not particularly looked dangerous I think they'll be so pleased to have Dean Garner back and it's Mikey Johnson the other player it's not Mo going off he's staying there so Dean Garner back from the African Cup of Nations with uh, DR Congo of course didn't make too many appearances and Adam Reach is on as well another player who we've not seen too much of but does have the ability to deliver a good ball into the penalty area but you know, certainly Jed Wallace not happy to find himself leaving the field of play here's Townsend down this left hand side Marshall's only had a couple of fleeting appearances really for West Brom since he arrived Reach for the first chance to cross which he does flips off Walker-Peters and he's safely into the arms of Bazunu. It's been a tough run for uh, Adam Reach in terms of his time here. 26 starts from a possible 124 championship appearances since he joined the club. Injury has certainly blighted him, but he's a player who, I mean, he hasn't actually managed an assist or a goal in the last two years. But he's fit at the moment, so he gets his chance right now as Dean Garner just touches that onto Fellows on that far side. And it's going to be picked up again at the edge of the penalty area here by Southampton. 65 minutes played. They still lead by a goal to nil on Talk Sport 2. Yeah, he doesn't do tappings though, does he, Adam Reach? <laughs> it's normally something out of this world. But interesting, you know, all four forward players have now been taken off for West Brom. So a complete change in the look of the forward line. Dean Garner and Marshall as the, as the two forwards. Fellows on the right with Reach on the left. He did exactly that on Tuesday night against Cardiff and mm. it worked for the second goal in particular. But at, at the time, they were already one up, of course. You're listening to Talk Sport 2. This is the EFL Championship. It's West Bromwich Albion against Southampton. Uh, with McDonald's, you can order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. That Ryan Fraser goal in the 14th minute still separating these two sides. And Southampton just keeping the ball at the back and just trying to put a measure of control on this game. They lead by a goal to nil. Russell Martin is at the edge of his technical area. He said in his press conference yesterday, he didn't sleep very well the night before. Not because of the defeat against Bristol City, but actually because he was excited about getting back out to it and getting back to the game. As we welcome listeners from Talk Sport, we're into the last 24 minutes or so here, plus time to be added on. 
And it's still West Bromwich Albion nil. Southampton Wilders keeper goes in with a challenge at the edge of the penalty area on Maro shoulder to shoulder. And the Southampton fans are furious because they felt that was a free kick, but the referee waves it away. Plenty of changes in the second half. Four so far for West Bromwich Albion. Grady Diangana has entered the fray. We've seen a bit of fury from Jed Wallace, the West Bromwich Albion captain, as he was substituted off. But it's still Ryan Fraser's goal, which separates the two sides and the former West Ham Norwich and crew centre forward Dean Ashton is alongside me uh, better from West Bromwich Albion in the second half but then again Southampton have made changes just to get a little more control in the game Dean yeah I mean West Brom started the second half brilliantly and it needed some substitutions from Russell Martin just to wrestle back the control of the game but West Brom I think what they'll be disappointed is is they have been better but they've only had one attempt on target at home I know Southampton have a lot of the ball but still that's not really good enough no and, and they've struggled throughout the season when they have gone behind to get themselves back in the games they've only picked up two points all season when they've gone behind plus obviously Carlos Corbran was sent off for touching the live ball in play which we think is the first time that's happened to a manager in the in the English either Premier League or, or the Football League and that's bound to be having an impact on West Brom as well isn't it well he isn't the type that just sits on his on his chair on the on the bench is he he's constantly up he's constantly vocal he's probably quite annoying actually to have as a manager but the players will miss that just over 20 minutes remaining here and they're on the attack again Southampton down that left hand side and he's just trying to work the opportunity there is a dozy and he does brilliantly and he eventually gets it goalwards but it takes a deflection and it's out for a corner down this right hand side with Southampton to take away to our right in front of the uh, away supporters as we enter the last 22 minutes or so of this game the game continues right now over on TalkSport 2 where it remains West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton 1 and the corner again will be taken very slowly unsurprisingly by Stuart Armstrong uh, Adam Armstrong's departed by the way uh, David Brooks has come on to replace him for Southampton in another change for them one left of course for West Bromwich Albion, Jeb Wallace still just sitting there talking to Andy Vyman right now, not looking the happiest, it has to be said. Here is Armstrong down this right-hand side. Swings that one across and the header was up there from, it wasn't quite Steams, I think it was Harwood Bellis that got the final touch and it's out for a throw uh, on that far side. Yeah, and you could just see the disappointment from Bednarek who got himself free at the back post. Just too much on that header from Harwood Bellis and went over the top of Bednarek. Interesting talking to Carlos Corbran after the game on Tuesday and, and very pointedly said, look, did you did you keep Jed Wallace tonight because you were ready for Friday against Southampton? But he said that the stats, his running stats against Ipswich were so high and so extreme, they felt they needed to give him a rest. So maybe that's part of the thinking tonight. But Wallace, not a happy bunny. No. And he, and he looked their biggest threat as well, didn't he? Uh, Furlong's ball forward is being chased after by Fellows. The exuberance of youth. It looked like it was a lost cause. He got there, got a foot on it, but then it just rolled out of play. Yeah, it's unlucky. Fans love that, though, especially from a young player just sprinting after a ball that he has no right to get. But just going back to Jed Wallace, I mean, look, he, he never missed a game for Millwall, did he? So it's not like he hasn't got the capacity, I don't think, to, to give as much as he does every single game. Bazunu under pressure from Dean Garner inside the box, gets it out as far as Walker Peters. He's going to go across his own penalty area towards Bednarek, who just gets there before Fellows, who is arriving with pressure. His Keepray down this left hand side. He shrugs off the challenge of Aribo. Keepray going inside the penalty area, outside of the right foot, plays it across to try and find the arriving Fellows in the penalty area. But instead, there's a chance for a break on now with a dozy. Uh, for Southampton on the far side he's over halfway wants support which is arriving now from Stuart Armstrong down that left hand side Adozi though still going finds Armstrong out wide an arm in the air from Moat wanting an offside decision Adozi is hauled to the ground referee says no and it's back on towards halfway with Bednarek and now with Harwood Bellis who's inside West Bromwich Albion territory 18 and a half minutes to go still the Saints lead by a goal to nil a rebut in the box on his left foot gets it across trying to turn and get the shot away that time was Mara he's got the ball at his feet then he goes down after Keeper had put an arm on his uh, shoulder inside the penalty area it was fairly theatrical and it was waved away by referee Sam Allison quite rightly 
Yeah, that's embarrassing. That's just <laughs> ridiculous from Mara. Just a little bit of footwork and then he feels a tiny touch and throws the left arm back in a dramatic fashion. There's a member of the Strikers Union hearing that. Are you allowed to say that? That's embarrassing for another striker? Well, yes, because I certainly used to dive over a goalkeeper now and again, but not, <laughs> not with arms flailing. You really had to dive over a goalkeeper in those days to get a pen, didn't you? Here's Arebo <laughs> driving forward towards the heart of the penalty area. Tamara again. It's a good challenge this time from Eric Peters, who's kind of grown into this game a little bit. Distribution a bit poor at times, but defensively he's been good. He's got more work to do here, though. Arebo and Smallbone have possession. It's Arebo. Oh, lovely ball inside. A dozy inside the box. Chance here to spin and shoot and score. And he does, David Brooks. Wonderful feat. First touch of the game. And it's a brilliant touch to round the keeper and get the shot away. And he goes and celebrates in front of those Southampton fans who've made the journey up the M40 and then up the M6. And they look like they're going home happy tonight. The Saints have marched into the Hawthorns and they've wrecked the home record of the Baggies. It's West Bromwich Albion nil, Southampton 2. Oh, it's such a well-worked goal from Southampton. Down the left-hand side, three or four players all involved. One and two touch play. Once again, it comes from them winning it back. Small bone into a rebo. Out towards Stuart Armstrong. One touch to Adozi. Two touches into Brooks. And then the picture that he must have in his mind, Brooks, because he takes the touch instantly away from the defender. And the touch has to be perfect. And it is. And then he just swivels and lashes it past Palmer. What a brilliantly worked second goal from Southampton. It was a wonderful finish from Brooks. Just come on. He just... I mean, Peter's put his arms out and then he just slips the ball beyond Palmer. And with 16 minutes remaining now, Southampton probably look to turn on the style and wrap this game up. And the Hawthorns is hushed on what was going to be a night of celebration. And with their home form as it's been since that defeat against Leicester at the beginning of December... You thought it may be that, but that all started to go wrong as early as the sixth minute, didn't it? When Carlos Corberan was sent off for West Bromwich Albion. 16 minutes remaining. West Brom nil, Southampton 2. You're listening to Talk Sport 2. A reminder, Plymouth Leeds, tomorrow lunchtime. Underway at 12.30 right here on Talk Sport 2. Your home of the EFL. Alternatively, game day exclusive brings you Brentford against Liverpool. That's live and exclusive from 12.30R. Coverage gets underway from 11 tomorrow morning with Faker others alongside Sam and Stewart. And then tomorrow afternoon, our TalkSport 2 exclusive Premier League game is Spurs against Wolves. Here's Reach trying to get a shot away from the edge of the penalty area. They need something desperately now, West Brom. Time running out. And still Southampton play out from inside their own penalty area. This one, they've given away possession, though. Moat helps it on to Townsend. Closed down by Arebo. Back to Moat once more. Here's Jakuzlu. Kipre looks the obvious option, but instead he goes to Moat again. There's room on that right-hand side for Fellows, if they could find him. Reaches the one in a central area at this moment with Dean Garner. Here's Jakuzlu, pressured and harried that time by Sikon Mara. And his second championship start. Not really delivered too much, but he's played his part in this Southampton performance so far. And the early ball through is to Reach. Reach does well. Fellows, right-hand side, left with the edge of the penalty area. Here's Dean Garner. Dean Garner looking to cut it back, is he? Chips it over the top. And a great header from Yukuzlu. And a brilliant save from Bazunu to tip it over the crossbar. That is unbelievable from Bazunu. I mean, he must be... So cold, he's not done anything all game, Bazunu. And all of a sudden, he has to dive to his right hand side. Brilliant ball from, I think it was Stian Garner on the left hand side, just clips it up towards Yakuzlu. Powerful header, and then with his left arm up in the air, Bazunu to flick that over the bar. And like you say, he's had nothing to do, but the <laughs> celebrations from Bednarek and Harwood Bellis just say it all. Here's Moat who delivers the ball across, left-footed, it's an outswinger. Calmness is the suggestion from the 
West Bromwich Albion coaching staff. Here's Dean Garner. Left footed ball swung over towards Keepre, headed up in the air and over and behind by Harwood Bellis, who's hurt himself in the process. But it will be another corner to West Bromwich Albion away to our left hand side. That celebration there between Bazunu and Bednarek and Harwood Bellis, that's a team that's conceded six goals in two games and wants a clean sheet yeah. tonight. Oh, it? absolutely it does, yeah. But they know as well what that might have done to the momentum of the game to lift the crowd to get West Brom back into the game and their goalkeeper comes up with a magnificent save just when it's needed Moat to deliver again it'll be an out swinger because it's left footed from this left hand side in front of the Brummy road end swings it to the edge of the six yard box Marshall gets the header down and it's comfortable for Bazuno away to our left hand side to gather up inside that penalty area a reminder why tom uh, tomorrow Spurs against Wolves is live on TalkSport 2 our exclusive Premier League commentary game Adrian Durham will have all the goals as they go in from the Premier League and the EFL Burnley against Arsenal is where Adrian's going to be based tomorrow Fulham against Villa as well of course uh, and Dean and I will be watching Nottingham Forest against West Ham as well plus we'll have that classified results service uh, at 5 o'clock for you tomorrow afternoon as well right here on TalkSport and not forgetting the cricket what a day's cricket it was today the third test between India and England continues day three here on TalkSport 2, tomorrow morning, 3.30, we're underway. And how wonderful has it been to hear Bumble, particularly talking us through the wonderful century today from Ben Duckett. 88 balls to 100 in India. Quite outstanding. And we'll have more of the same tomorrow on day three. And it's live and exclusive, of course, on TalkSport 2 from 3.30 in the morning. Small boat goes back to Bazunu inside the... Uh, penalty area away to our left hand side out wide for Walker Peters who's been as busy as ever for Southampton former Spurs man of course launching that forward out wide on that left hand side where Armstrong has been we mentioned earlier just one defeat in those 24 starts prior to today looks like he's going to make that one defeat in 25 the former Celtic man and uh, happy to keep the ball Southampton and just try and frustrate West Bromwich Albion and Nathaniel Chalaber is coming on so we're not going to see Andy Vyman tonight despite the fact he's caused a real goal threat since he uh, came to West Bromwich Albion yeah and I, I'm sure he won't be particularly happy with that when goals are needed when you're a forward on the bench and you're not used that's usually a bit of a you know, punch to the solar plexus well Chalaber will come on another one of those players who is uh, out of contract in June here at West Brom there's a whole number of them and, and you wonder how the new owner will have an impact on those players I'm guessing they'll wait and see first whether they're a Premier League or a Championship team again next season before making those kind of decisions 10 minutes to play West Brom and Jabby and Neil Southampton 2 is there a way back for the home side Marshall working hard on that far side but it'll be a throw into Southampton midway inside their own half so Chalabas going to enter the field of play and he will be replacing when the fourth official Anthony Backhouse sorts his board out well it's going to be Yakuslu who's made his way over anyway so on will come Chalaba even though Anthony Backhouse has put up 34 and Chalaba is on and it's going to be Joe Rothwell who is coming on and we're also I think going to see Kamal Dean Suleimana for Southampton and Stuart Armstrong will leave and I suspect he'll leave to a standing ovation away to our right hand side after a very impressive performance and Rothwell will come on to replace him and Sekomara will be replaced by Suleimana as well in the last couple of changes for Southampton yeah Stuart Armstrong I think has been excellent He's drifted over to that left-hand side at times to, to double up against Furlong. He's travelled with the ball well. He's known when to pop it off. He's, uh, he's had an excellent game. And Suleimana waits to come on. We were talking earlier. I mean, there's uh, a third substitute appearance since he returned from a hamstring injury picked up back in November. But £22 million he cost from Wren, of course. Can't find his way into the starting 11 just yet. But he's got about 10 minutes or so to show what he can do here to Russell Martin. West Bromwich Albion, Neil Southampton 2. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, your home of the EFL. 
and it means that potentially you know West Brom's position in fifth there's going to be teams in behind them who if they can pick up three points this weekend will suddenly think oh hello yeah, just there's a get, race on here yeah, absolutely to get within one point and West Brom I'm sure will, will know that and those teams will be licking their lips thinking tomorrow we can reel in a second team from the playoffs and that will be the plan and as for Southampton of course they'll move back into second place and those automatic promotion places 67 points they'll have from 32 games if the last 10 minutes pan out here without further drama and they're happy to just keep the ball with a rebo and I guess when they get in front as well yeah, that's they just have oh, the ability that, to keep the ball that second them. goal especially there's a foul there and then it's Moat and Smallbone and it's gone the way of Southampton so they have the free kick midway inside the West Bromwich Albion half which they've taken very quickly and that second goal just gives that little bit of cushion doesn't it it just allows them a little bit more time on the ball well you can just take even more care you can slow it right down you can get Bazunu involved even more draw West Brom out the 16th time a substitute scored for them as well this season it's the most in any of the top four divisions for Southampton after Brooks found the back of the net his first goal of the season got his first start against Bristol City and it was September that he hit the target for Bournemouth and safely away to our left hand side Bazunu will gather that ball up another wasted delivery for West Bromwich Albion and no surprise that there are a few empty seats already starting to show around the Hawthorns. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have the feel of a grandstand comeback finish, does it? I mean, all it takes is obviously to get a goal from somewhere, but it's not got that feel about it. There's no atmosphere at all now inside the stadium. Yes, Sulemana. Plenty of time just to turn and keep possession of the ball. Exchange passes with Walker Peters and Aribo down this right hand side the former Rangers midfielder and again the options are endless the pressure being applied by Reach and Dean Garner and Marshall and Fellows just not really pressing any problems not, for Southampton well they're not going all the way though are they they're, they're pressing close enough to put pressure on but not close enough to actually win the ball back and Southampton are like well that's great for us we'll just keep popping it to the next available player the changing of your front four when it works you must feel like a bit of a genius but it's not really paid off here for West Brom maybe a chance here for Marshall now to send the ball out wide down this left hand side it's Peters left hand side of the penalty area early ball in is blocked out by Walker Peters and it will be a throw down this near touch. That was a waste. That was a real waste. I mean, he's far enough away from Walker Peters to make sure that he misses him and just whacks it into the body of Walker Peters when you've got two players rushing into the penalty area. Not quite sure why Peters was free as well and not Townsend. Well, I mean, that's poor, isn't it? Throw into reach. He's just tried to help it on its way to Townsend and it's straight out of play for a goal kick and kind of sums up West Bromwich Albion's night all in all into the final five minutes and they still trail here by two goals to nil I think it's also a massive plus for Russell Martin's side to have lost away at Bristol City to then come here a really really difficult place for any team to come and to at the moment be winning in the manner they are it's a, a big big plus Moat down this left hand side here is Adam Reach on this near touchline into Moat once more on his right foot, Dean Garner just slips underneath him. He gets the better away from Smallbone. And then away will come Suleimana with the ball at his feet. Very classy. He's just looking for the options, though, because he knows there's no need to rush. Smallbone finds Walker Peters. And he'll look to go back towards his own goal again. And Harwood Bellis is there. And it'll be Bednarek that can play it out. And as we talked earlier, the first real test for Southampton away from home. Um, so far against the top five they've played four games all of them at home but five of their next seven fixtures are against teams in the top half of the table obviously coming up after this they've got Hull 
uh, Millwall. They've got that cup game against Liverpool. They've also got Birmingham to come and Preston as well in the next few fixtures. So they're certainly winnable fixtures, but they do still have to go to the likes of Leeds and Leicester and Ipswich, which will be the real test. But if it's like tonight, with the team who've got the third best home record in the championship, you think they might do OK? Yeah. Tasty fixtures, them, though, aren't they? There's some really, real crackers really to come great. towards the end of the championship this season. And you'll be able to follow them all right here on TalkSport 2, your home of the EFL. They're having a good time, those Southampton supporters, away to our right-hand side. They've packed out their half of the Smethwick end. And we made that long drive up, what, two and a half, three hours. Not good on a Friday as well knowing how traffic can be. But they'll go home happy as Basunu just stretches and pokes the ball to the feet of Walker Peters and he's back inside his own six-yard box again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Sandman football, isn't it? It's just putting everyone to sleep. It's, you know, <laughs> the West Brom fans are, you know, starting to properly leave now. They've had enough. So Lamana out wide to this right-hand side. Here's the scorer of the second goal, David Brooks. Again, goes short to Walker Peters and a rebound on this near side. And here comes the ball from Brooks back into the centre circle and just happy to keep the ball and play it round as things stand. All eyes will switch to Leeds tomorrow lunchtime, of course, when they take on Plymouth away. I know earlier in the season when Leeds played up at Preston, Daniel Fark was certainly complaining that every time they went away, it was everyone's big game. We'll see how Plymouth approach tomorrow here's reach down the left hand side can he set up a grandstand finish not with a delivery like that comfortably dealt with at the edge of the six yard box Chalaba has done well to keep possession of the ball infield he goes where he finds Grady Diangana to the right from Diangana helped on its way by Furlong now a chance for from that far touchline Moat left footed ball swung towards the back post and towards reach but again Walker Peters has all the time in the world just to head the ball clear and West Bromwich Albion will pick up possession again as we tick into the final minute of the 90. Keep break goes short to Moat. They trail here by two goals to nil. Out wide on this left-hand side. It's picked up by Townsend. Townsend infield to Peters. Peters again, five yards inside the Southampton half to Moat. Now it's a chance maybe for Chalaba, who finds Furlong. Hugging the touchdown on that far side is Fellows. He'll go on the run. Looking to cut onto that left foot, goes to the right, cuts it back across. Marshall was almost there, but again, it's an outstretched boot from Bednarek that's perfectly timed. Yeah, he's done that about five times, Bednarek. Fellows again, again. again, at this level, Bednarek, you know, international footballer that, you know, on his day in the Premier League, had some good, had some good games, maybe lost his way in a bit of confidence also, but then you know, back into the Southampton team looking really solid at this level more than good enough yeah the only game he missed earlier in the season was that game at St Mary's against West Bromwich Albion that was good of suspension we're into five added minutes he's one or two players tonight walking the fine line of the nine yellow cards Darnell Furlong and Bednarek being those two but neither have found themselves in too much trouble with referee Sam Allison tonight he was too busy dealing with Carlos Corberan's red card six minutes into the game here come West Brom down that right hand side Fellows on the charge looks to cut across the edge of the penalty area Moat's there alongside him comes to reach reach edge of the D wants a foul because he feels he was about to try and unleash a shot when he got a touch but there wasn't too much in it no I think it was a foul though I do yeah I do I just think it was a little pull on Adam Reach the players knowing that he would have wanted to take a shot there here is Reach again. They've won it back, West Brom, with Moat. Chips the ball to the right-hand side. It's Fellows again who's finding a little bit of space out on that far side. Stevens goes to close him down. Moat on the left foot, swings it in early. Marshall was the only one in there again. Doesn't beat the first man. It's the header from Bednarek once more that got it away at the first attempt. And then a secondary header that time has allowed Walker Peters to come clear with a rebo. He's downed by Townsend and it's a three kick for Southampton and we've had just over a minute of the five added and I'm sure one of the reasons for Stevens playing tonight will have been the fact that those crosses were going to come in and that extra bit of height that he brings 
has just meant they've dealt with pretty much every cross that's come in. There was only a couple in the first half that flashed right across. And Russell Martin's got it pretty much spot on tonight, hasn't he? Two goals, clean sheet. Almost the perfect away performance, really. Here's a Rebo charging forward. Can they make it a third and really finish the night in style? He tries to find Brooks. It's read by Townsend and then Marshall tries to get it clear. But he can't find reach on this near side and it's out for what will be a throw down this right-hand side for Southampton. Three minutes of the five added still to play here on TalkSport 2 and it's West Bromwich Albion nil. Southampton to a reminder we've got golf coming up once we are done tonight as well and then we're back from 3.30 with the live sport and the live cricket from that third test in India in Rajkot and then more live football from midday with Plymouth against Leeds followed by Wolves against Spurs and then over on TalkSport we've got the early Premier League game tomorrow of course Brentford against Liverpool followed by the goals as they go in as we go round the grounds with Adrian Durham tomorrow afternoon on TalkSport West Brom nil, Southampton 2 and back into second place for the Saints and well the baggies will be under a little bit of pressure and obviously four points clear of Coventry and Norwich and Hull and Preston all of whom still to play this weekend of course and could close the gap to just a point and West Brom are back in action again on Tuesday night against Plymouth away and they've got Hull away as well and the away form has not been the best they've won 36 points at home of the 52 so the away form has been a bit sketchy at best and Plymouth and Hull, not easy places to go. And they've also got QPR and Huddersfield coming up too in their next five. So some tough away games to come for Carlos Corbran. So. Yeah, I mean, the contrast from the home form to away form is actually incredible for a team that's in the playoff mix. You know, third in terms of home form, 15th in terms of away. You know, the next two, like you just said, when you're going to have teams that have probably got within one point of view that's going to make it difficult and obviously following a red card there'll be some time you know, at least one game away from the dugout for Carlos Corberan that's lifted out to this near side where Reach is waiting Dean Garner will look to just try and turn and get away from the attentions of Arebo Chalaba just flicks it up in the air towards Dean Garner but can't find him and now the run is on from Brooks and that's brilliant he's got over halfway here Brooks is still going just tried to drop the ball gently into the path of Sam Edozi but didn't get enough on it and West Brom can clear here's Dean Garner inside the centre circle driving forward Marshall gets a couple of touches out wide again to Dean Garner but again the pass wasn't the best and it will be easily cleared for Southampton as far as Brooks and then Walker Peters Marshall's closing him down but it's back quite comfortably with Harwood Bellis and we're into the final few seconds of the five added minutes at the end of the night and well I think there's Amy and Dean and the Saints fans left inside <laughs> the Hawthorns plenty of empty blue seats and Sam Allison blows the whistle and that home run is over and done with the West Bromwich Albion because Southampton have bounced back from defeat against Bristol City and have comfortably gathered all three points tonight here at the Hawthorns it was a poor, poor night for the home side from the moment Carlos Corberan was sent off in the seventh minute of the first half. Ryan Fraser with a goal in the first period, his sixth championship goal uh, of the season for the Newcastle Loney after a well-worked corner from the visitors. And then David Brooks finishing off a lovely move for the second for Southampton. The substitute coming off the bench and he's the 16th sub to score a goal for Southampton this season it's the most in the top four divisions and it's probably one of the reasons why they're in such good form and back up to second in the championship table full time at the Hawthorns West Bromwich Albion nil Southampton two Adam thank you you're absolutely right Southampton second a point ahead of Leeds four clear of Ipswich still a whopping 11 points behind the leaders Leicester I think you'll stop taking bets on that one uh, West Brom stay fifth Four teams sit four points behind them. Dean Ashton, a great performance, great result for Southampton. Yeah, I just thought they were a level above actually tonight when it really mattered um, in those moments when they controlled the game, the movement of the forward players, the quality 
that they showed was a level above West Brom and, and it shows West Brom really, really miss, you know, DK and, and Josh Madger, that real focal point at the top end of the pitch, tried to change things in the second half, didn't work at all. Southampton in the end, very, very comfortable and, and really important actually to, to have a response to the, the defeat to Bristol City and they did it in, in, in a perfect way tonight and obviously put the pressure back on Leeds. Absolutely, Leeds taking on Plymouth live and exclusively here on TalkSport 2 tomorrow lunchtime, 12.30 kickoff for that one. Great moment in the second half, Dean. David Brooks scoring his first Southampton goal. He's already got a couple of assists, only played three games, but he took this with real Premier League quality, didn't he? And underlined actually the strength that Russell Martin now has on his bench. Yeah, absolutely. And and obviously trying to bring in players in such a crucial part of the season when you're doing well is only going to help the manager. And you're right, that goal, because of the touch, it was the touch mm. that made it, just cushioned it past Peters, Brooks. And we know he's got that ability. So given maybe more game time, what a player to have in the run into to the end of the season. And for Rob Page and Wales, of course, will be heading uh, to a playoff ahead of the European Championship this summer. They will need a fit and firing David Brooks, and he looks like he's going that way. Uh, no real criticism, as you mentioned, for West Brom. A, a gap in quality. What are they? Where do they go from here in terms of just responding to this result? Well, obviously, if they're going to be genuine contenders and continue to be till the end of the season when they've got people chasing them down then that away form is going to have to improve mm. and with those couple of away games coming up and you wonder can he get it right in terms of that front four I thought Fellows was good when he came on surprised he didn't actually start the game yeah. but there you feel like it's it's lacking a little something at the top end of the pitch if they don't keep a, a clean sheet have they got the goals in them to continue to be in the playoffs it's going to be difficult so many teams are uh, chasing them absolutely both teams under pressure <coughs> excuse me under pressure at the moment uh, in their own way a good way because you want to be going for the top six you want to be going for the top two and West Brom despite defeat tonight are still very much in the playoff picture Southampton desperate for that automatic promotion spot long way to go as we know Dean Ashton thank you for being with us where are you headed to tomorrow as you drop the microphone uh, just a little <laughs> number of Nottingham Forest West Ham see how West Ham respond we shall see we'll be with uh, Dean who's part of our team for Around the Grounds on TalkSport tomorrow all the goals as they go in in the Premier League and EFL as well just to let you know it did finish a little bit earlier